conceptual blending, my absolute, absolute favorite thing in cognitive linguistics, which is saying a lot because cognitive linguistics is full of absolutely incredible things. Now, like so, so many things in cognitive linguistics, conceptual blending can seem really, really abstract on the one hand, but then ironically, on the other hand, um, because the examples that we have in our textbooks uh, tend to be um, a little more concrete, uh, we can forget, we can sometimes forget that these things are conceptual in nature and that they don't just live in textbooks. In fact, um, everything, just about everything you do um, through the day, thinking, remembering, planning, being creative, uh, making, making meaning of what people say, making meaning of the world, conceptual blending is just, it comes into play all the time. So just for uh, the purposes of this slide, we are going to concentrate on one specific, um, more concrete aspect of it, which is the integration network. Now an integration network is a conceptual blend. It's just a visual representation of that blend. Uh, it's a, it's a, a, a sort of a diagram that we use to be able to, to look at what goes into the blend, what makes it up, what's in the input spaces, uh, how it work, works, how the blend emerges. So we're gonna be looking at that and we're gonna be um, using uh, some really concrete everyday examples to demonstrate how you set up an integration network, what goes into it, what the different parts are and what they mean. Uh, and then you can take that um, and apply it to the integration networks you need to, to, to do, which are <laughs> more conceptual in nature. I think it just helps to have something really, um, really concrete to, to base it on. So let's say uh, we're in the kitchen and we have a bowl of blueberries and we have a bowl of yogurt. There are some things we know about the blueberries, they're firm, we can eat them, they're berries. And some things we know about the yogurt, it's dairy, it's creamy, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a little more tart. So we have these blueberries and we have this yogurt and what are we gonna do with them? Well, let's put them in a blender. Let's say we have um, uh, these ingredients, berries and yogurt, we put them in the blender, we blend them up and what do we come out with? We don't end up with berries and yogurt, we don't even end up with just a mix of berries and yogurt. We end up with something completely new. We end up with a smoothie. Now, whereas the berries and the yogurt were food and we eat them, we now have a drink, it's liquid. It doesn't, the properties have changed. So the berries and the yogurt didn't just combine in some way into a glass. They've actually blended and become something new. And if someone came into the kitchen and we gave them the smoothie, they may have no idea of what, uh, what has gone into making that smoothie. And this is what happens in a conceptual blend. We have, um, we have elements from different input spaces, at least two input spaces, that combine in, in a blended space. Different processes occur, a process of compression occurs, and a new structure emerges. And that structure is, well, it's new, it's, it's, it's different from the input spaces. Um, and that's exactly what, what we've just demonstrated. So let's look at all these things in terms of the elements that could go into, um, into a conceptual network as um, so <laughs> when, you, when, you, when you actually do a network. So let's think of the berries and the yogurt as our two inputs. Think of them as your two input spaces. What they are is the ingredients that we use to make the blend. So when, when, you, um, when you have to, when you have to um, do your networks, um, think of, and you have to decide what your input spaces are, Think of those input spaces as the ingredients that you're going to need to make that blend, right? What, what ingredients, um, what ingredients uh, are you going to be mixing together to make that blend? Those ingredients are the two input spaces in your integration network. 
Now, there are things, as we've said, um, that these elements have in common. They're not the same things. So we have fruit and we have dairy. They're not both fruit, but there are elements that we could kind of connect to each other. They're both a kind of food, right? We can connect them in terms of texture. We can connect them in terms of taste. The other thing um, that uh, we need to know about them is that there, are, there is information that applies to both of them. There's information, generic information that applies to both input spaces. Uh, this is more abstract, it's broader information. So where, whereas this information uh, that we see here was quite specific to the input spaces, there's generic information that covers all that information. These are both foods, they have textures, they're both edible, they have taste, they can both be ingredients. And apply to berries and yogurt, but it's not specific enough to, you know, if I gave you this generic information, you wouldn't be able to describe a blueberry very well based on this generic information. Right, hold on to that. We have two input spaces so far. We, um, and we have, we have this generic information. Right, now what goes into the blend? We have these ingredients, we have these inputs. Now we want, we have a blender. We want to put things into the blender. What do we put into the blender? We don't put everything in that we see. We don't put in bowls, tablecloths. We are very selective about what we go, what goes in. Uh, if these berries had stalks, we wouldn't want the stalks in our blend, in our smoothie. We would take them out. So we are selective about what goes in. Keep this in mind. Um, keep this in mind for your integration network. You have your two inputs, which are your ingredients. Uh, but when it comes time to actually make that blend, we don't put everything in. We are selective about what goes in. And then, of course, what comes out uh, is completely different from the ingredients that went in, as we've discussed. We have the smoothie. Uh, the smoothie is representing our blend. We have, um, uh, as, 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 as we chatted about a little bit earlier, what emerges in the blend is, is um, it has a character of its own uh, and it is unique in terms of its space between the two inputs. Now, this uh, is an integration network. This is a blank integration network to show you where the different elements go. When you encounter an integration network, you usually see it populated. But this is to show you, um, you have your two input spaces. Uh, they, then there's the generic space where we capture the generic information that we discussed. There is a cross-space mapping that happens between the two input spaces, those elements we discussed that we, can, uh, that, that we can map between. And then finally, we have a selective projection. Remember, selective, not everything. Selective projection into that blended space. And within that blended space, uh, the meaning or the new entity emerges. So this is the blend. This is the conceptual blend. It is just a visible, <laughs> it is just a visual representation of that conceptual blend. So now how would our smoothie example, how would our smoothie example um, map into, map into, to, or, or slot into, um, slot into that? Oops. <laughs> running ahead of myself a little bit. Okay, um, how would how, how would our smoothie example um, fit into this, uh, or how would we show our smoothie example as an integration network? Well, we have our two inputs, input one and input two that we've spoken about. And now the first thing um, I do when I am, when I am uh, creating an integration network, I decide on my two inputs. I have a look at, um, you know, what can I say about these two inputs? What are, what are their characteristics? What, what, is, what, is go, what, is, um, what are the elements that are going into these two input spaces? And then we, we establish these connectors, uh, which are, as Evans and Green says, based on matched elements on a basis of identity or role, or based on metaphor, because we know that sometimes the metaphor is operational in a blend. 
So this connects these, these uh, two inputs. Then we look at that generic space where there is information that is abstract enough to be common to both of the blends, uh, so to both inputs, or however many inputs there are. If there are more inputs, which they can be, uh, we still need to have this information which is generic enough to, to cover all of them. Um, again, nothing, nothing very specific in that space, um, but it feeds up from the two input spaces. Right, and then where the magic happens is that we selectively project from those input spaces down into the blended space. And within that blended space, um, the new or the emergent structure um, uh, appears, all right? Uh, it is not contained in either of those, those inputs. You can see that. When I'm speaking about being selective, you can see here I've, I've taken everything from input space two and projected it into that blended space. From input space one, I haven't projected in the firmness of the fruit because there is none of that firmness that, uh, that emerges in the blended space. So I, I haven't projected it in. Um, yes, a completely, uh, a, completely, a completely new thing. And the way you can think of it is that the blend becomes more than a sum of its parts because we have berries, we have yogurts. What emerges is more than what we put in, um, more than we could, uh, we could predict or imagine would arise within that blended space. So looking at this here, this would be our, uh, <laughs> it would be our integration network based on a very concrete example of a smoothie. So this is exactly what you are gonna do when you have to do an integration network for a conceptual blend, it's just gonna be not as visual in nature and um, not as, as uh, concrete in nature, but this exact process is, is what you do when you create uh, a conceptual network. Right, now within that blended space um, uh, and, and around the blend, all kinds of exciting things are happening. And what I haven't put on this slide is the compression or vital relations that happens. Then we have composition, which is what facilitates the fusion of the elements from the, main, from the, from the, the, two, the two different spaces. Uh, this is the, the, the blending process, right? In order to make the blend happen, we need more than just, yes, the elements are kind of coming together. Right, so we've, we've, we've brought in those things from the two input spaces. Then we have a process of composition. Then we have a process of completion. Now this is important because what's in the blended space doesn't automatically pop out as having meaning. You are, you are, you are drawing on things that you already know. You're drawing on background frames. You're drawing on past experiences to complete that blend and to turn it into to something meaningful. So for example, if you had never seen a smoothie before, uh, never come, in, come into contact with a smoothie, uh, you had, you, and, and, and you had never seen berries before, never, ever, ever, to you they look like little blue beads. Stick them all together, put them in the blender. There's no way that you would know that that's a, a smoothie and that you can drink that smoothie, right? you would need to have certain information that you can draw on. Oh, right, and this is, an, and this is, and specifically this is a drink that if I blend yogurt and berries together, it makes a drink. You're drawing on things you know, you're drawing on existing frames to complete that blend, to give that blend a meaning and to, to create that emergent structure. Now, once you've done that, the, the, emergent entity in that blended space now exists, um, it has an existence in its own right. It's not bound to those two input spaces. It exists as an entity and you can manipulate it mentally as an entity um, in terms, if we're thinking of it in, in the, the tangible, in the tangible smoothie in a glass sense, what this means is I could take it out of this room. I can 
add chocolate to it. I can, um, I can, I can plan that maybe next time I go to a restaurant, I'm going to have the smoothie. Oh, maybe next time when I do it, I'm going to make it with ice cream. Um, actually, maybe right now I'm going to put it into another glass. I'm going to put a little umbrella into it. I can, I can, we do what we call running the blend. You can now use that blend in all kinds of um, new and, and uh, amazing ways. So, for example, if we think of a, a different blend and a very easy blend to imagine, if we have a blend where input space one is a spider, input space two is a man, spider bites the man, in our blended space we have Spider-Man, uh, the process of elaboration allows us to imagine all kinds of stories in which Spider-Man is doing all kinds of things. He's a blended, he's a blended character, right? Elaboration, you can now play with that blend, you can have fun with it. And that is really the basics for doing your integration network. But now question two in your assignment is to look at an integration network for um, a kind of a joke where where, which, where blending comes into play to um, create the humor in the joke. The humor is, is, is you know, the, the humor that emerges. So the example you have in your book is, what do you do, what do you get if you cross a kangaroo with an elephant? And the answer is holes all over Australia. So we are presenting a similar one uh, for you. And our conceptual blend uh, joke is, what do you get if you cross a turkey with an octopus? And the answer is enough drumsticks for everyone at Thanksgiving. Now we haven't given you a step-by-step -step breakdown of this, uh, but we do have an integration network for you. But before we, we, we um, page down to it, let's just think about it for a second. Our two inputs, what would our two inputs be here? Uh, it's a very obvious one. We cross a turkey with an octopus. We have a turkey in one, uh, space. We have an octopus in the other space. And okay, let's leave the generic space for a moment. But in the emergent space, that's where the humor, so in the blended space, that's where the humor is emerging. So that enough drumsticks for everyone at Thanksgiving, that is emerging in the blended space. But now how does all of this fit together? How do we actually put this into, um, how do we actually put this into an integration network? like this, <laughs> right? In input space one, we have a turkey. Some things we know about turkeys, uh, they're considered meat. Uh, it's a bird with two legs. Uh, it's traditional at a Thanksgiving meal. Uh, so Thanksgiving, I think most of us will know that it's an American holiday. Uh, and on that day, it's traditional to eat a turkey. If you are a meat eater and you have eaten chicken or turkey, you will know that the turkey legs are called drumsticks and there are two turkey legs. Then other input is an octopus. An octopus lives in the sea, it's seafood. For seafood. We know it has eight legs. We know that people do eat, um, there are people who do eat, eat octopus and that when you uh, eat an octopus, what you're eating, you call it calamari. You don't, you don't call it octopus anymore. Okay, our two input spaces. In our generic space, remember the information here is uh, broad and it's abstract and it can cover both of those inputs. So turkeys and octopuses are types of beings. Meat and seafood, food types. Um, the associations we have with them, we have one as a seafood delicacy, one as a Thanksgiving meal. And then what do we serve from them? Okay, for the turkey, we serve a lot of things, but in this case, the drumstick. And then the calamari rings from the octopus. Uh, very broad, very broad information in our generic space. Then the awesome part, projecting down into the blended space. Remember, we spoke about this as being selective. We don't project every single thing from both of these things into the blended space. So we would um, project, um, I would say, the turkey, the meat, uh, that it's a bird, the drumsticks, Thanksgiving meal. From the octopus side, I would say the octopus projects. I didn't project the seafood in. Um, we didn't project um, 
uh, okay, so <laughs> we, we didn't project in that it's seafood uh, or that it's a seafood delicacy or that it's calamari rings. So we took from those blends, uh, from those input spaces, not everything, certain things. And remember when you're working on this, the same as we discussed when you're working on metaphor. Um, there is seldom an absolute right or an absolute wrong. They, you know, they can be, they can be, they can be. But um, a lot of it is so subjective and a lot of it just so what, what you see in this bed, what you make of it, because, because meaning is constructed and, and because as we've discussed, none of this is, uh, you know, meaning uh, the way we, our perception of the world is different. Um, the way we create meaning is different. So the way I do an integration network might be a little bit different to the way you do yours. That is okay. That is absolutely okay. Right, so now we have, from these two input spaces, we've projected into the blend. And what we have here is, um, in our minds, is, is we, have an, <laughs> we have a kind of mix between a turkey and an octopus. Now, if we actually try to picture that, if I said to draw a picture of this turkey octopus blend, you can't really do it. It, it doesn't really work on a physical, it doesn't work on a physical level but it works on a conceptual level. You can understand that if um, a turkey had six legs like an octopus, we would have a lot of drumsticks and everyone at the table for Thanksgiving would be able to get a drumstick. It doesn't work physically, but conceptually it works. And that is, that is part of the amazing thing about, about blending is you now have these things that don't fit together, make absolutely no sense. But you can you, but you can actually you can actually imagine it, and you can find the humor in it. Absolutely incredible. And then if we're we're looking here in the blended space, so we you know we've had a process of compression, um, we've had the composition now. In terms of completion, when we're talking about those processes, when we're talking about completion, drawing on background knowledge on frames to to complete the blend you need quite a bit of information to be able to draw and you need to know about thanksgiving you need to know about drumsticks all the things that we've discussed under the inputs there so you draw on all this information you're drawing on other information that isn't even here maybe everyone likes drumsticks uh, maybe there's always a fight for drumsticks at at the table um, because it's a nice meat there is you you would you would be drawing on things that I'm not drawing on, um, again, because it's so, it's so subjective. So you're drawing on a lot of things to, to do this. And now you can elaborate on that blend. Now that you have um, not even an image, but just an idea in your head of this turkey with eight legs, you can now play with it. You, you can picture yourself maybe at a dinner table where everyone, um, you know, who would you, who would you be eating uh, this, this with? Maybe kind of what you're imagining is, okay, but where would I, where would I buy this? So now in your mind, you are working uh, with, and, and you are bringing to life a turkey that has, has eight legs. You're no longer thinking of the two separate inputs of the turkey and the octopus. You're thinking of something, something completely new, something completely different that now is able to act as an entity in, its, in, in and of itself in your mind. And that's, um, that's where the humor is in that blended space and that's where it all, that's where it all comes together. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully um, now that we've taken you through two more concrete example of an integration network and then something that pertains to question two of your assignment. Uh, you have an idea of how to put those networks together and you understand that all it is is a visual representation of the blend. Lots, so much happening with conceptual blending. Um, so wish I could put more of it into here, but your book is, is, has got, got stunning stuff in it. Please, please have a look at it all. And again, please remember to reference your work. There, there is stunning work out there on this. Thank you very, very much. And good luck for uh, this part of your, um, good luck for your conceptual blending assignment.